Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India And let us see what do we do next. So all the quantities are known in this problem, uh, this uh, equation, except the moment of inertia of this bar. Now, what is the moment of inertia of a bar about its center of mass? It's uh, hello, sir. This is Omkar. Uh, sir, the last yeah. term should be uh, into 12 by, 12 by 3. 3. Correct. Yes. Thank you for the correction. It's 12 by 3. Okay. So. The moment of inertia of a bar is ml square by 2 about its center of mass, which is at the half, like, you know, at the center of this uh, bar. Now, I'm considering the moment of inertia about the point of rotation. So, you guys are aware of parallel axis theorem, which says the moment about an axis that is parallel to the axis of the center of mass about which the moment of inertia has been calculated. Okay. It is I of moment of inertia of center of mass plus the mass of the body times the distance from the center of mass of the point in consideration. Okay, which for this case would be what? This is the moment of inertia about center of mass and the my center of mass is at what distance from the point of rotation? It is L by 2 minus L by 3. Okay, remember, I have the point of rotation L by 3 here, and this is the center of mass, which is L by 2, and I want to find out the moment of inertia about this point. Okay, so this distance is nothing but L by 2 minus L by 3. Okay, and this is square. Okay, I can simplify it further. This would be ML square by 12 plus this would be ML square by 36, which would give me ML square by... 9. Okay, and then I can substitute it here. Okay, and I can sum up this term as well, which would be KL square times 1 by 9 plus 1 by 9 plus third term would be 4 by 9 times theta should be equal to 0. I can cancel off the 9 and then it would be ML square theta plus 6 KL square that should be equal to 0. And effectively, I can further reduce this to 6k by m times theta. This should be equal to 0. And this is my final equation of motion. Okay. Anybody has any doubt? Sir, this is Devesh, sir. Devesh, yes. yes. Tell me, Devesh. Sir, if we consider the mass of, of the beam, sir, then the, uh, then the gravitational force acting on the mass that will also force some... It would. It would, right? But remember yeah. what did we discuss in last class? That if I have a system in which initially the gravitational force was being balanced by the stretching of the or the deformation in the spring, then we can neglect the gravity force if the rotation or the deformation is considered from the equilibrium position. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. Then 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 the uh, then it means that if the beam is parallel or it is horizontal exactly horizontal that it means won't be no 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 it won't point. be exactly horizontal so yes, initial sir. equilibrium position would be well i mean it depends isn't it i mean you can find out what would be the deformation like if you have to find out let us say this is the bar here and i have this point of rotation about this point okay the mass mg is actually acting at L by 2 here. Okay. And I have a force, okay, which is related to the angular displacement here. So I'm going to say this is, let us say here it is k times L by 3 times theta, okay, which is, which is in this direction. And this force is opposite to this, which is in what would be here, k L by 3 times theta, and this would be k. 12 by 3 times theta, right? So I can now again take the moment about this point to find out what is the value of theta. And accordingly, I can uh, find out that whether it is in like this or whether it is like this. Okay, depending yes. upon the value of theta. Okay, so initially okay. there would be some 
and for this this holds true for all the cases in which you have a mass and a spring if initially gravitational force was balanced by spring there would be some initial stretch in the spring okay which is due to gravitational force now if you are considering the displacement or rotation from the equilibrium position okay then you don't need to consider gravity if that displacement or the angular rotation is from the equilibrium okay otherwise you just consider it from the initial position okay then uh, uh, here if i call this delta as let us say delta not okay so in the uh, this equation here then you have to consider first spring would be kl by 3 theta plus theta not second spring kl by 3 theta plus theta not third spring k times 2l by 3 theta plus theta not okay and then you will see that this term times theta not this term times theta not this times term theta not would balance the mg here in the updated equation because now you are considering mg and the deformation from the initial position so again it would get cancel off is that clear to all of you yes sir anybody has any doubt okay, so i can see something there in the chat okay so sanjay got confused with the direction of the inertial force can i say whichever direction i am assuming my displacement to be if it's let us say translational displacement u it would be opposite to the direction of the displacement the inertial force and if i am considering rotation for example in this case so i i consider rotation to be clockwise in this direction so my inertial moment was anti clockwise is that clear to you sanjay so you need to be very very comfortable with setting up these equations of motions okay all right let us do next problem in next problem again i have a spring mass system except in this problem so let me draw the figure i have stiffness k and i have a damper here okay so it's a spring mass sense except instead of having a block i have now a disk okay i have this disk all right the radius of this disk is r okay what do you need to do you need to set up the equation of motion for the system I, i mean the same problem you know set up the equation of motion and you are given one condition this disk is rolling without slipping so remember this disk can translate it can also rotate but there is a additional condition that has been given to you this disk is rolling without slipping okay so you need to formulate the equation of motion remember when i draw a representation like this it means that these are rigid okay it all i can i could have just drawn it like this it doesn't matter it just says that whatever is the displacement here is the same is the displacement here whatever the velocity here is the same the velocity at these two point that's all do not start considering that you know it is going to deform it like this or this or like you know any other combination okay so just keep that in mind all right so set up the equation of motion okay using you might need to use some of your concept from the rotational dynamics rolling without slipping what does it mean anybody can unmute yourself and then let me know what is what does it tell me about the problem rolling without slipping Uh, sir that means v is equal to r omega yeah but what is the basic concept behind that v equal to r omega why do we why do i get v equal to r omega the amount rotated is the amount traveled in the uh, in a straight line amount rotated at which point so can i say that amount rotated here is same as amount translated no. yes sir the point where the point of contact at the ground the velocity at that point is zero see what happens where does slipping occurs slipping occurs at the point of contact right 
so if you consider this the only position where slipping might occur is this point correct okay and what does slipping means it means that the point of contact here okay so if i consider this disc and it is it contact with any surface here okay this point would have certain velocity right what kind of velocity it has if i am assuming that it is u and then it is also being rotated by an angle theta okay what is the velocity of this point u is in this direction because and it is rotating clockwise so there is a tangential velocity due to rotation which is what it is theta not times r okay is that clear now the net velocity of this point is u minus theta dot r okay and to ensure that it is rolling without slipping slipping means that there is a relative velocity between these two points between this surface which is which has net velocity <laughs> as or uh, zero and this point there is there should not be any velocity okay so the relative velocity of this point with respect to ground is minus zero because ground is zero and that should be equal to zero which gives me the condition u equal to theta dot r okay where theta dot is actually omega theta dot is angular velocity is this clear to all of you how do i get theta equal to uh, omega uh, sorry u equal to omega r okay sorry this is not u this is u dot sorry this is u dot here all right clear if that is clear then try to attempt this problem and get me the final equation of motion you have 10 minutes or 5 minutes let us make it 5 minutes okay mohit mohit can you hear me yes sir were you able to finish this problem sir sir partially sir not sure i am correct or not okay that's fine what problem did you face sir uh, sir my equation is like this 3 by 2 mr square theta double dot plus uh, c theta dot r plus kr theta is equals to 0 that absolutely correct so then how do you say that you were not able to finish it that's the uh, final equation of motion right yes sir, sir okay i will so you were not sure that's fine that's fine okay so basically let us go step by step as i said we need to focus on the free body diagram here okay let us consider that this disk here has a translational motion u all right and then a rotational motion theta okay now can i say the spring here and the damper here is actually connected at the center of this disk right so both of them would be experiencing the displacement on velocity which would be actually related to u and not any component of theta first is that point clear or not for example if i connect something here it would be u plus r theta if i connect something here it would be u minus r theta okay effectively if i had a spring here if i had a spring here however if i had a spring that is connected at this level it would experience displacement that is u and similarly the velocity would be u dot is that point clear anybody has any objection to what i'm saying right now okay if that is the case the total force at the center level for this disk would be au times cu dot it would be acting opposite here okay now i know that this is rolling without slipping right so how can a disk on a surface okay let us say i have a surface like this is it possible to roll on a surface that is smooth or without friction no sir why not um for the point of contact 
let us say it is rotating and it has there would be some rotational moment right let us say it is rotating in this direction let me say it has opposite to the direction of rotation can i put i theta double dot as its uh, inertial moment can i do that okay the second force that i have it is at the center level okay let me say t where t is ku plus cu dot okay and if there is no force here no tangential force here and if i take moment of the force zero about this what is it being balanced by nothing there is no other force that is balancing the moment or the inertial moment here so there need to exist a force that should balance the rotational inertial force here okay so uh, mathematically i need to have a friction force here okay and like you know you can assume any direction you want if you assume it like in a wrong direction it will come out with a negative sign let me assume it to be this direction there is normal reaction here and of course there if this is the case so if this is the free body diagram and if i take the moment about the center remember this is not going to create any moment the force normal force n is not going to create any moment the only moment that is going to be created is by this rotational or the inertial moment i theta double dot and the force of friction f so can i say fr which is in the clockwise direction minus i theta double dot which is in the anti clockwise direction this should be equal to zero okay so fr should be what is the i of a disk moment of inertia of a disk about its center it is mr mr square by 2 times theta double dot now remember i have this relationship u dot equal to theta dot times r if i double differentiate it i can get it as if i differentiate it again i will get it as u double dot by r so i can write this as mr square by 2 times u dot by r so f would effectively be mu double dot by 2 okay so this from the rotational equilibrium of this disk now from the translational forces if i consider all the forces in the x direction i have this force towards left and then because this disk is moving to the right okay i would also have to apply an inertial force because of this one which would be mu dot and this is in addition to i theta double dot okay this might get confusing so let me just redraw it again the free body diagram okay the movement u this is theta here okay because this movement is is in positive x direction i will have a force mu double dot opposite to the direction of translation i would have inertial moment which is opposite to the direction of rotation then i again have the force due to damper and the spring which we have derived as u dot plus ku i have this force of friction which is in this direction and then there are normal reaction and the force mg okay so if i do that i can write it as mu double dot plus cu dot plus ku plus f that should be equal to 0 and f i have already derived as mu double dot by t so 2 so i can write this as plus cu dot plus ku that should be equal to 0 and this is my final equation of motion okay so as soon as you apply the d'alembert's principle and then apply an inertial force to the system which is opposite to the direction of movement either displacement and rotation the problem simplifies to a static equilibrium problem and that you can solve using the principle of engineering mechanics nothing sophisticated going on here very simple basics of free body diagram and writing down the equilibrium equation okay yes who is this sir it is ravi ravi uh, yes sir so uh, i return the uh, answer which is not consider to the friction uh, uh, is wrong if sir it is considering how would it rotate if there is no friction on yes, the sir. surface what yes, what sir. force yes, making it rotate yes sir yes sir i understand now okay all right anybody else yes dhanshri uh so can you uh, please explain that uh, why uh, theta won't be there 
like first uh... okay for that uh, i hope i understand your question correctly you are asking that why won't theta be here at the center level right is that what you are asking yes okay if you consider rotational motion or the kinematics of a rotational motion if a rigid body is moving with a translation okay translational displacement with u and if it has an angular displacement which is represented by theta okay at any point in that and this rigid body uh, does not have to be circular it could be even like you know a randomly shaped rigid body as long as it is moving with u and there is a point that and like in the rotating by about this by an angle theta any point in this body can be represented as a vector sum of u plus theta r okay and for this case because it's a circle i can write at all the points of this body will have because the rigid body will have the same translational displacement u however because it is rotating need to consider that point and see how much it has rotated or how much that rotation has given it the tangential displacement okay for example in this case for example here it is moving u in this direction and then theta r in this direction so the net displacement of this point would be somewhere along this which would be u square plus theta r square under root which is a vector sum here u is in this direction theta r is opposite to this one so it is u minus theta r at this point it is u is in same direction and theta r is also in the same direction okay at this point if you consider there is only u here the translational one okay we do not care about the rotational at this point okay because whatever the displacement that is occurring here the forces in the spring and the velocity in the damper is only determined by the translational displacement of the disc not by the rotational displacement okay because we are considering a small rotational displacement and a small translational displacement okay so if your confusion is that it might look let us say something like like this and then it has moved like this remember that this one is likely to be very small considered to this one right here okay and the rotation of the spring okay like this has a very small component of force in the horizontal direction okay so you just need to understand that why this won't create any force in the horizontal direction the component of that force would be very small if you are considering small forces and rotation uh, small displacements and rotations okay okay thank you sir yeah anybody else has any doubt sir tushar is here yes tushar sir, go ahead this, sir is this equation can be write by writing u double dot equals to w is omega square theta omega square r theta nahi nahi sir only omega square r omega square r okay how is that helping you in this case so so basically you are saying uh, basically you are saying like you know this has theta square r correct yes sir okay now if i remember correctly this you get by equating your centripetal force to uh the force the tangential force and then obtaining the relationship right yes, however yes. in this case it is not going to help you in this case it is not going to help you like in in this example itself for example i mean we want something differential equation that is in terms of the displacement u or this displacement theta here okay yes, so while that relationship might still hold true it is not going to help you here that relationship okay sir thank okay. you sir yeah any other doubt sir yes sir. devesh here sir 
can we consider the uh, second law of motion of uh, newton second law and absolutely. can we apply the, can yeah, we apply absolutely. that on the lower point considering the moment of the damping force and the stiffness force of the spring and equating can, into i i alpha you, where i you can consider the second law of motion and that would effectively give you the exactly same answer second of law of yes. motion what does it say the net resultant force should be equal to mass times acceleration and in terms yes, of sir. moment it is saying that net resultant moment should be equal to the moment I, of I, inertia I, times yes. the angular acceleration okay yes, so i'm yes, not uh, doing anything different okay all you need to do in this case you are going to say c u dot plus k u plus f should be equal to basically whatever the uh, force that you are getting which is in the positive x direction so that would be minus mu double dot okay and then if you bring it to the left side it would give you effectively the same equation is that yes. clear yes sir okay okay if that is clear we have 5 minutes let us do another small problem another interesting problem not very difficult or convoluted if you have understood the principles correctly you should be able to do it okay what do i have here two rigid concentric disc which, which are rigidly connected to each other so these discs are connected to each other i have inner disc of radius r and then the outer disc of radius 2r okay there is a string which is connected to inner disc so it is not actually sliding over the disc or anything it is connected to this disc inner disc okay and there is a mass that is being suspended here the outer disc is connected to a spring of a stiffness k okay what do you need to do find out or develop the equation of motion for this mass in terms of displacement v u which is considered from this equilibrium position can you do that okay so take 5 minutes and attempt this problem and then i will quickly discuss this should not be very difficult if you understand the concept you should be able to do within 5 minutes uh, sir yes so what is the mask of the discs oh these discs are massless Thank Sorry, you. I did not mention that both these discs are massless. All right. So let us see. As I said, the trick, or not the trick, but any uh, basic steps involved with these kind of problems is to consider correctly the free body diagram. Okay. Now, in this case, one important aspect here is if this mass moves down by u, how much would be the rotation of the internal disc? Let us say. this is the rotation due to movement because i as i said this string is connected to this inner disc so if it is go down by u this one would be u by internal radius okay so the angular rotation would be u by r because it is connected to internal disc and the inner disc is connected to the outer disc okay so all both disc system are rigidly connected so they there would have the same angular deformation okay so if the angular deformation is same this circumferential displacement would be theta the angular displacement times the outer radius which is 2r here and if i substitute the value of theta here it would be 2u okay and whatever the circumferential displacement of the outer disc the same would be the stretch in the spring here which would be 2 of u is it clear up to this step 